is from the big British castle, coming live from the Glastonbury Festival. We're inside a special area with great big walls, so the weirdos and the hoolies can't get through to go to the loo. A lot of bad language in that track there that was removed by the bad language police. Quite right too. For an artist called Jamie T, he doesn't have, have trouble with his T's. No, he was not pronouncing any of There's his no T's, T's in there. there. He's, he's annihilated all T's. Watch the dust settle. Settle. Settle, settle, settle is the a word. T in there. No? Hey, listeners, welcome along. We are coming to you, like most other shows from Six Music this weekend, live from a major music festival that happens in Somerset. Uh, called Glastonbury. We should say who we are as well. Yeah. Because this is not our normal slot. You're right. People Sorry to use the confused. word slot, but it is now Indeed. after the watershed, so that's fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. My name's Adam Buxton. My name's Joe Cornish. Together we form a, uh, a duo called Adam and Joe. Yeah, an amateur radio presenting duo called uh, Adam and Joe. We won a competition to be on the radio. Yeah. We're really excited. This is our first time. Yeah, I'm very nervous. You know what? I am uh, unusually excitable because there's a, a palpable atmosphere here. I mean, it might be to do with the millions of people and the amazing bands and the flags and... You you know, the fact that you've had two pair of ciders. Yeah, the fact that I've had half a <laughs> cup of cider. I've got a really low uh, alcohol tolerance, yeah. listeners. This is genuinely true. That's I mean, true. You're not a big boozer, I'm are you? I'm not a big boozer. I had half a cup of cider. He's absolutely out of control. I, I'm, I've been on the moon for most of the afternoon. He's gone totally mental. Amazing. But listen, folks, let me just paint a little or aural picture for you right now. There's a big orange sun, an Apocalypse Now-style sun that is just dipping down behind the OB van. Our um, outside broadcast van, where we are currently sat, is right next to the pyramid stage. That's the big main stage here at Glastonbury. The specials are just about to finish their set and uh, in a few, in about 45 minutes, I think Neil Young will be on stage. The specials have played a blinder. They are sounding great. Yep. Hit after hit. Bang, bang, bang. Body Ooh, blow, body ow. blow, body <laughs> blow. Ooh. Ghost Town, do nothing. Smash. Rudy, a message to you. Wallop. You know, and they are uh, having a good time out there. <laughs> having a good time. He doesn't look absolutely <laughs> perky. The man, what's his name again? The lead singer of the yeah. specials. Uh, Terry. Terry. Terry yeah, Hall. Terry Special. He's not, like, chuckling and telling jokes or anything like no, that. We've had this discussion before. We though. have. And he's not, like, got a special chuckly persona for Glastonbury. But they are really playing yeah. a good gig Even the there. BBC security men were bopping along They there. were tapping the gates yeah, and there. and they're hardcore individuals. Yeah, they really are. They don't take none. No. And they were bopping, ar bopping along. There were a couple of little children, I would say about five or six, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they were stood on some crates or something, mm. and they knew every single moment of the special song. They were like, no. they were miming to all the horns and stuff like that. They must have a dope dad. They are groovy, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, what kind of people are they going to turn into when they're Very 25? Very good people. Good people. Yeah. That's right. They've yeah. been well raised. Listen, we're going to play you a bit of music now, listeners. This is from the Fleet Foxes performance earlier today. And they're a band that sound really beautiful in an outdoor context. Mm. You know, they're so earthy and organic and it's fair true. trade. It's absolutely true. And uh, they sounded terrific. This is them uh, playing the beautiful... Are you going to say something? Well, I was just going to say that we bumped into their guitar so tech. That was exciting, you know, because, I mean... Well, he rushed over. He's a fan of the show and, yeah. and you know... The poor old Fleet Foxes have suffered a lot of Stevenage, which is a catchphrase associated with this program, if you're not a regular listener. Yeah. Uh, they've had our program's catchphrase shouted at them at, at lots of their gigs. Steven! We thought the, the, the guitar tech might be upset or have a bone to pick with us, but on the contrary. He was very pleased about it, and he, he said that the rest of the Fleet Foxes were fine, yeah, Mr we... Pecknold. And he said that... Uh... Well, I made him a little offer. I said, look, if it ever gets too much for the Fleet Foxes, because we'll he it. was saying they had one in Paris, they got Stephen in Paris, it's happening internationally. Uh, we said to them, if the Fleet Foxes ever get genuinely annoyed by it, we will issue a command to our listeners yeah. to cease and desist. Cease and desist. But anyway, they're all off to see the Animal Collective playing, um, but we're going to play one of their tracks, as Joe said earlier on, and yeah. this one is... Mykonos. Yeah, it's all right. Welcome, you're welcome. That sounded uh, extraordinarily similar to the CD, didn't it? They sound like girls. Do you think? <laughs> I think they sound like beautiful girly men. Girly, and they are. Girly men. That was the Fleet Foxes with Mykonos. That's what you want, though. I, from a live experience, I want it to sound as similar to the record as possible. Because the you? record's the thing you fall in love with, right? I like it when bands play their tracks much faster. You know? Do you? And a bit more ragged. James Brown style. Beat goes out of sync. Twice as fast. Uh, I like medleys. Do you? Yeah. Do, you, do you like it when they <laughs> reggae them up? I love that. 
You might get some of that with Neil Young later on. Do you re- does he reggae stuff up? I don't know if he reggae stuff up, but he's disrespectful with his with his back catalogue. With his catalogue. People are concerned. We've heard one or two people chatting about this around the site. They're worried or, or you know, they're trying to figure out whether Neil Young will play classics. Is he going to go for the hits or is he going to go for the obscure message set? You never can tell, can you? It depends on what, what kind of a mood he's in. He might start proselytising and doing the political hardcore mm. set, you know? Sometimes he does. Uh, he can't finish a song. Mm-hmm. You know his endings go on forever. Yes. Endless fills. He loves very long guitar solos. That's good, though. It's good to toy with the fans. Keeps them coming back. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a marketing ploy. <laughs> That's what it is. He's figured it out with his marketing men. He loves to toy he with the long, fans. He has long marketing he meetings. He keeps them coming back. All he's interested in is maximising revenue. He loves to... Would you say it's also true that he loves to disappoint the fans? That also <laughs> keeps them coming back. He loves that. <laughs> hey, listeners, if, if you've never heard uh, Adam and I before, we're, we're not serious about any of this... Uh, stuff at least I'm not. <clears throat> no we're, we're not equipped with any actual facts except no. I've got a number of extraordinary no. facts about Glastonbury for you right now in a similar vein are you ready for these I don't think I am but do it anyway all right here's the Glastonbury facts jingle where have you got prepare to receive Glastonbury fact <laughs> here it comes now all right now when you, you were just about to ask me where I got these facts from right <laughs> yeah I, I, I might withdraw that question and uh, let, let's just have the fact and I'll make my own judgment all right I'll tell you where I got them in a second here's Glastonbury fact number one did you know that the photograph of the Pope seen on the popular t-shirt I like the Pope the Pope smokes dope mm. was taken in the healing field in Glastonbury in 1983 that was the year that the festival headliners were Laura Branigan and Jimmy the Hoover. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that. Did you not I know? I didn't know that. Are you going to ask me where I got these facts now? Uh, no, I know. I'm not going to ask you. All right, you ask me later on then. I know where you got them from. <laughs> <laughs> did you know that a typical Glastonbury produces enough mud to fill 12 large fields <laughs> at a music festival? <laughs> I, didn't, I mean, that's well, unbelievable, isn't it? I didn't it? know that, but I could have worked it I out mean, for that's myself. 12 large fields, that's unbelievable. It's less surprising than the Pope one. I mean, that's a real bolt that, from the blue. I was surprised. Yeah, when that's, I read that's that really one. remixed my Can head. that really be true? Can it? Well, it, it I must like be. the Pope, the Pope smokes dope. That was actually <laughs> taken in the healing field. Is that really true? How about this? The specials who played. Uh, tonight, who mm. are playing as we speak at mm. the uh, in the pyramid stage, the specials only agreed to play the festival this year after being promised that the film Ghost Town, starring Ricky Gervais, yes. would be dismantled and all the parts buried in lead-lined caskets shaped like Taylor Leone. <laughs> I mean, that seems unbelievable, doesn't it? It does seem unbelievable. But How it's... do you dismantle a film? Well, this is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure that's not just a typo? <laughs> I mean, you'd have to go back and de-shoot it. <laughs> you'd have to go back and de-shoot And this is what they're having to do. You'd have to stage all the scenes again, I mean, backwards. It's, you, right. And you'd you... have to run the film, the negative, you and re-expose to... it and blank it. Yeah, you have to ask Ricky Gervais to stand down. You oh, have to ask man. all the people that saw the film never to speak of it again. What a huge sacrifice, because that's a really good film. Well, you know, it's a fun romantic comedy, it but is. it was the only way that they could get them to do the slot on the pyramid wow. stage. Wow. What brilliant facts. I found them. I'll tell you where I got them. I found them. In a, in a toilet? In a toilet. But it was a nice toilet. Yeah. It was one of the BBC toilets. Well, listen, let's have some more music while we uh, absorb that. Is this going to be the Maccabees? Here's the Maccabees with Love You More. This was recorded earlier on today uh, from the other stage here at Glastonbury 2009. Wow, that's the Maccabees with Love You More. I like the way we're getting a tiny bit of the onstage banter at the end of each live record. Yeah, you got to have some banter. You're here, but, but that was kind of incomprehensible. He just said... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's enough, isn't it? Yeah, that's fine. That's all you need. That was live from the other stage earlier on uh, today at the Glastonbury Festival 2009. We're very pleased to be joined in our tiny outside broadcast cubicle mm. by Murray Lachlan Young. Have I pronounced your name correctly there? Absolutely correctly, Thanks yeah. Thanks very much. Yeah. Now, Murray, you were kind of um, up and coming when we were teenagers reading Sky magazine and seeing your handsome face. <laughs> Uh, in kind of louche poses ah, yes, in yes. the late 80s. I still try and keep the old uh, louche pose up. You're looking good, man, if you don't mind <laughs> me saying. Oh, well, thanks very you much. You have been pickled in aspic or something. Well, let's not talk about that. It's your secret? Because I was thinking that, like, you were a candidate for early burnout. 
but you failed to burn out. Well, uh, no, I did burn out. Did yeah, you? Yeah, that's probably why I'm still looking so fabulous. Yeah. Because uh, I burnt out and then went and lived in a wood for five years. Did you? Which wood? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was in Sussex. It was yeah. called, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the Priory Wood. It was it was kind of my own little priory, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, man, you've come out of it looking wonderful, and I'm very pleased to say still producing poetry. Yeah, they've been really milking you for poetry so far, haven't they? You're, you're kind of... Are you Six Music sort of resident poet for the Glastonbury weekend, is that right? That's me, for sure, yeah, yeah. And they've been pumping you for poetry at the rate of four a day. Ooh. Can most poets, you know, turn stuff out at that rate? Well, I wouldn't like to comment on other people. I mean, John but, Hegley uh, would explode, surely. John Hegley couldn't handle it. Do you think you're compromised? your creative integrity at all by being asked to, you know, like a sort of over-milked heifer. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going so, with it's this. It's a beautiful image. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks you're a lot. You write your yeah. own poetry, well, yeah. You know. <laughs> no, you're like no, a sort no. of poetry war correspondent, though, aren't you? I, I think it's uh, um, creatively just having that sort of uh, um, weight is actually good for me yes. because uh, I, need to, I need to have some sort of need deadlines. Some discipline. But it's, it's, it's frying yeah. doing four a day. And you've chosen a, a particular subject for your poem that you're going to read to us now. Gonna, is he going to read it now? Yeah, yeah. yeah let's we've got time it. before the news. And then yeah. we'll deconstruct it afterwards. Are you comfortable with you that? You can try. Yeah. I can tell you it's all over the place. I've got <laughs> a, I should let you know I've got a B in A-level uh, English oh, really? literature. Oh, okay, yeah. Right. Have you ever written a poem, Joe? I've got a... a like a serious I've one. I've got an S level. Yeah, probably. Have you? In the past. Yeah, sure I have. Because it's a funny thing writing serious poetry. Uh, is it? Well, no, it's weird. I'll tell you, uh, just before you read your poem, Murray, because it's a strange thing. Like, do you ever spontaneously tell poems and, and, and recite poems when you're around at people's houses and stuff? Do people, presumably people ask you to do that a lot? Well, back in the time when you were talking about it, I would do it for sure, because yeah. I, I was on the hustle to get people to listen to me and make, make friends and influence people, but now it's uh, I, try and, I try and avoid it at all costs but I think, um, or I went through a period of trying to avoid it at all costs, and uh, I mean, now I think I'm, uh, and my sort of uh, the ego situation is, is calmed. Yeah. So if people say, would you give us a poem? And you say, oh, no, no, I couldn't possibly do that. It's a bit, you know. So, yeah. so I say, yeah, sure. Yeah. But people tend not to ask too much. And, and do, people, do you get the other thing when people recite poems to you, their favourite poems? Oh, yes, yes, yeah, yes. yes. That, that happens on a very regular basis. I find that yeah. weird. Someone started <laughs> reciting uh, Dr. Seuss. Mm. Oh, The Places You'll Go, which is a wonderful book. Oh, I love that. But the guy knew it off by heart, and he recited the whole flipping thing. I thought he was going to quote a couple of lines. Ten minutes later, we're all sat there nodding and smiling and going, yes, I would read it. That, uh, How was it for you? <laughs> it was odd. <laughs> Everybody knows one poem, though, don't you think? Yeah. Like, everybody's got to know one poem. Which is your one that you know? Oh, an English airman... Oh, man, I can't remember it. I've gone blank. I would say you don't know it, then. W.B. Yeats. Just busk it, busk it. I know that I shall meet my fate somewhere among the clouds above. Those who I fight I do not hate. Those who I guard I do not love. My country is... Oh, man. But that, you know, that's not bad, is it? No, that was First good. couple that was of good. lines. I used good. to know the whole thing. Under pressure, I could come out with the whole thing. I only know This Be The Verse by Philip Larkin, but that's got the F-bomb in it, so um, I can't say that. They flip you up, your mum and dad. But listen... Murray, would you please do us the honour of reading the poem that you have composed for this occasion? The sunset poem, the final piece of the day, um, and this is it, OK. The setting summer sun returns and thoughts of mad monsoon may fade. Collective thanks must turn in humble praise to you, O rubber welly boot. O stalwart of the muddy field, protector of the glass dough foot for honesty, grooviness and keeping it real. Oh, the flip-flop is fine, but you are divine. You give such an option to tweak and refine. You come in a deluge of colourful colours and patterns and petals and proud polka dots. You stand like a rock at the base of a look. You're practical so it can suddenly sexy, and girls just seem to absolutely go crazy about you. Sexy? A welly boot? Why, I hear you cry, because it's simple, you see. Because out of the boot comes the shape of the calf. And onto the calf goes the long woolly sock, and the long woolly sock goes up to the curve of the knee, and the curve of the knee meets the curve of the thigh, and the curve of the thigh can go ever so high till it meets with the edge of the frayed mini skirt. But that's not the point. The point is, the point I'm trying to make is, I dare say that soon your work now will be done, and we, fingers crossed, may return to basking sun-kissed in the summer sun. And even then, people will cling to you in silver, pink, and deep metallic green. So thank you, quiet, cultural, cossing icon. Thank you for just being you. Thank you for keeping us dry, O oh welly boot, as we drift on the raft of this Glastonbury dream. Wow. Thank you very much, Murray. That should Good be stuff. that, that should incredible. be etched on the hillside at Glastonbury, you know, because the welly boot is that should be the symbol of the festival. But you're right about the welly boot and the way it sets off the the lower leg. 
and it provides a sort of animalistic stance, sort of gives you a touch of the centaur. It's, Do you the, know what I mean? Mm. There's something fetishistic going there on. There is, isn't it? There is, yeah, yes. Yeah. I prefer a thigh boot myself, as you can well, see. Well, we should let you know, listeners, that Murray is wearing the most extraordinary waders, I'd call them. They go up to the centre of the thigh, and <laughs> frankly, they're overly sexy. Wait till you see the gold lame thong. <laughs> I, can't I will wait. I'm it's, waiting. It's I'm like having waiting. Lord Byron in mud-spattered <laughs> waders right isn't here it? with us. Uh, folks, thank you so much, Murray. Yeah, that was brilliant, Murray. Well done. That's Neil Young with Harvest Moon. He's coming on stage here at Glastonbury in about 20 minutes. That's when he's scheduled. You know, I can play that tune pretty well. You can, can't you, Juan String? I forgot about that. I've got a Neil Young chord book. I can't read music, but you know those books where they just do the dots? Sure. And you put your fingers where the dots are. Tabs, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I sing it along, and then you can do the strummy bit, and then you can go, ding, 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 ding. You're quite good at the voice as well. Well, you just have to do sort of Kermit, don't you? A high full yes. set of voice. Yes. <laughs> Go on, you do yours. Uh, I couldn't possibly do it. It would be too moving for the listeners. <laughs> it really would. You'd be in tears. <laughs> I've had half a cup of cider. I can only just hold it together. As it will start weeping. Get me a guitar. Maybe I'll do it at some other point on the weekend. <laughs> That's a promise. Joe said that we, we were going to go completely up. Because we're doing a show tomorrow, right, listeners? Mm. We're on from 11 until 2 tomorrow morning on Six Music. And then we're on again... Uh, for the for the same show that we're doing tonight, yeah, tomorrow. Night. This is called our sunset show. Adam sunset show. Sunset show. Yeah, we do sunset every day. Right, that's right. the deal. We're sunset guys, hmm. and so our plan tomorrow is go is to go completely mental after the um, <laughs> <laughs> after the three hour show. Yeah, after the three hour show, right? Yeah. Because we've got jobs to do. We've got to go and do the red button coverage. It's very exciting for me and Joe. We've never been on TV before, mm. and they are offering us. Not proper TV, but the red button. And the red mm, button's mm, a big part mm, of most mm. people's lives. You Definitely. Know, they're, they're, everyone's finger is always hovering over the red button when you've got your remote there. You're sort of, oh, I wonder what's on the red button. <laughs> Can we not watch the news? Hey, there's been some good red button stuff. That, um, that stuff to do with, with the, the Amanda Inucci stuff that was on the red button. That's that was true. Good, wasn't it? Good Stuart Lee interviews. Yeah, after... there's often good little nuggets on the red button. Hey, I don't know if you thought I was being ironic or not, because I wasn't. Good. The red button's amazing, and we're doing some red button coverage tomorrow, and we are taping a little segment where I'm going to read out some jokes that our listeners have sent in, made yes. up jokes, right? And I'm going to be reading them out at the cabaret tent mm -hmm. at 4.30 here at Glastonbury tomorrow afternoon. I think we're coming on just after Kevin Eldon. I mean, he's amazing, Kevin Eldon. Tough then, act to follow. Very tough act to follow. And then after that, I think maybe Jeremy Hardy comes on. God knows what Jeremy Hardy's going to make of my, the made-up joke <laughs> set that I've got planned. So that's our afternoon. But then we're going to go totally nuts. And then we have to do our sunset show tomorrow evening. So Joe will be so emotional by then. Fat Guy Goes Nutsoid. It's one of my favourite films. <laughs> <laughs> What's Fat Guy Goes Nutsoid? I don't really know. It's just a film title that I see every just now Just make and then. it up. No, it's real. Fat Guy Goes Nutsoid. Look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wondered what happens in it. I mean, I guess a fat guy goes nutsoid. <laughs> fat Guy Goes Nutsoid. Yeah, that's sounds, on my must-see list yeah. now. Sounds good, doesn't it? So what I'm basically building up to is um, saying that maybe tomorrow on the Sunset Show we can find a guitar and you can do your Neil Young. What, uh, yeah, on the show? Yeah. Yeah, sure, maybe. That's a promise. Well, it's going to be bad for everybody. Obviously, I mean, who wants to hear me singing Neil Young? Well, I do. Like, really sincerely. It'll be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to do it. Something I do in private to my girlfriend with the yeah, guitar, uh, you know, and hiding just, my bits. I'm naked sure. at the time. Of course you are. Yeah. Or you're just wearing your wolf pants. My seduction routine. But that would be amazing. <laughs> I would love it if you did it so sincerely. If you were, if you were so okay, you're on. Tired them. That would be brilliant. You are on. And then you could make me do something sincerely. Uh, I want it to be all about me. All right, we'll like, just be about you. That's <laughs> you're fine. not allowed to do anything. Uh, well, we should listen out and see if Neil Young plays Harvest Moon tonight because he may just mess around with it completely. He may get me on. He might be listening to this. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I was listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I was listening to a program earlier on this evening on um, Six Music. <laughs> wait, wait, we see a great big fat person. And um, <laughs> it puts the lotion in the basket. And Joe Cornish was on there. He was saying you could play Harvest Moon. I'm going to get him on to play for you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine the response in the crowd? It puts a lotion in a basket. <laughs> That's what it's going to be like when Neil Young comes on. Music time right now, ladies and gentlemen. Here is a track that was recorded earlier on today at Glastonbury. It's Regina Spector, and this is called Fidelity. I'm pretty sure they're not taking good care of themselves. 
Well, that's hardly the point of being here. They're just out there rolling around in their own filth. Abuse yourself with moderation. As far as I can tell. We went for a wonder earlier on today, listeners. I arrived this afternoon because I was uh, filming the sitcom yesterday. Joe, you got here yesterday, right? I did. I was here last night. So you were here for the deluge. I was. There was a, a, a massive thunderstorm. In fact, I was... Uh, kind of being patched through live to Radcliffe and McConey's show on Radio 2. Right. And I was in a little outside broadcast box. And just as I was about to go on, lightning struck the box. Mm. And I think all the electrics went down right across the BBC momentarily. And every time they patched me through, there was another fizzle. It was really quite scary. Mm. I think Joe Wiley very nearly um, got hit. One of her earrings. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know, I'm just fantasising. Yeah. But it was scary and exciting and, uh, It's yeah. probably, um, Andrew Collins... No, not Collins and McConey, it's uh, McConey and Radcliffe, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's probably uh, Stuart McConey just thinking, oh, we don't have to have Joe Cornish, do we? Yeah, trying to trying to slice me off, cut yeah, me off. get the lightning on. But I had a good wander round yesterday on my own. Where did you go? I went all over the shop... Uh, to one end of the shop and the other, and it was a little bit emptier than it is today, yesterday. Yeah. I met a couple of uh, fans of this show. Oh, really? Who had a made-up joke for us. Good one. They came and kind of got hold of me and said, look, look, we've made up this joke. Uh, his name was David Churchward. Mm -hmm. She was called Gemma Watts. And their joke was just awful. <laughs> I mean, it was really awful. And it took ages to say it. Yeah. And it was just really disappointing. And you had to stand there smiling all the time. No, as soon as she said the last word of the joke, I just turned and walked away. Did you? Yeah, but in a comic way. You sure, know. Sure. And then I came back again. It's so awful, I'm not going to say it to Are you. Are you not even going to say it? What do you... I mean, it is... It's really bad. Come on. Do I have to say it? You've got to say it now. What is it about it radio? Do, do I? Why can't we just move on? Because listeners won't know. It's the empty box syndrome, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Even if it's worthless, you still have to you know what it is. still have to have a little peek inside. That's how deal or no deal works. That's right. Okay, she said, Gemma said, uh, what film is this? Hello, all right. And the answer is The Horse Whisperer. Now, they thought they'd made that up. I quote, we feel we made this up on Wednesday in traffic, waiting <laughs> to come down. <laughs> How could you think you've made that up? Hello, all right. I would have done it a bit more like that. Yeah. See, that's very funny. Do you think? <laughs> Excuse me, um, I was wondering if I could borrow 10p for a cup of tea. I mean, they, they knew it wasn't very good, but um, I was shocked whisper. that they thought they'd made it up. We've got better jokes than that for the comedy tent tomorrow night. I saw a dance troupe performing a satirical ballet about second home ownership in Cornwall. No. Yeah. They How were was very that? good. Was it? Yeah, it was good. It was really taking the mickey out of those second homeowners. And yeah. there was a, lo a small local crowd finding it very funny. Yeah, I bet. Second homeowners. Thank God someone's finally stuck it to that lot. I saw Arthur Smith in the cabaret tent doing some very off-colour material for a family audience. What time was he on? 4.30. And he was using all kinds of swear words and sexual innuendo? Onanism. Onanism. And autoeroticism. <laughs> <laughs> For a family crowd. For a family crowd. That's not on, Some surely. families stood up and left. Did they? Well, it was a bit you know, too much too soon for the younger kids. Smith, you lunatic. It's provoking a lot of difficult questions. He's on the straight and narrow now. I thought he was a family man. Uh, What's he thinking about? I'm doing an afternoon gig at, uh, what was it, Latitude Festival or something. Really? Keep it clean. I've specially tailored the set so that it won't offend families. That's the way to do it. Because that's no good. Isn't or is that, or is it, or is it expected if you bring your family? Or is it expected? I've forgotten the question. Uh, now. Well, exactly. Now look what you made me now do. What you've done. Or is it expected? Uh, oh dear. Uh, <laughs> or is it expected that if you bring your family to something like this, then that's going to happen, right? And that's what I'm asking. Uh, I don't know. Yes. Yes, no, maybe. Listen, we've got some music coming up for you. This is an exciting, hot new band, right? Joe was, was just pointing at bits of paper while uh, I was Yeah, I was getting ready, getting the next thing lined up. This is a new band. You know about this, Adam. This is yeah. uh, a couple of members of Supergrass. This was a, like a surprise performance. Oh, yes, and they called themselves Hot Rats. And we bumped into Nigel Godrich earlier on, Radiohead's producer, and he has done some work with uh, Supergrass in the past. You know, he's friendly with all those Oxford chaps. You can embarrass him now. No, I don't think so. He was just saying, why they call themselves Hot Rats? But I said, well, it's presumably after the Frank Zappa album. Yeah, and that was a revelation. He seemed not to And he was that. like, oh, right. Anyway, so I'm excited to hear this. They played a, a mystery gig, right? Yeah, Danny this is Gaz. live from the park stage earlier. This is Hot Rats with uh, Lovecat. 
That's Gaz and Danny from Supercross masquerading as the Love Rats there, playing a cover of The Cure's The Love Cats and making it sound amazing. I called them the Love Rats, didn't I? No, they're the Hot Rats playing the Love Cats. Yeah. Hey, this has been Adam and Joe from the Glastonbury Festival. Thanks for listening. Stay tuned. Take it away. Bye.